mixing me vodka and me pencil orange. Teenage mum always looks after number one. I just love getting drunk because you can make a show out of yourself and not really care about it. <laughs> Give me the bottle. I do what I want when I want and I don't care what anyone else thinks about me. It's a nightmare. She goes out, she gets drunk, she smokes. And I'm terrified that she'll get that drunk one night. She won't know what she's doing. It's a cruel world out there. Hannah's bringing up nine-month-old Tanisha on her own after separating from the father. Being a single parent has not changed her self-indulgent behaviour. My attitude to life is live today like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> I'm 17, I'm still a child, I still want to go out and have fun. I don't think it's selfish that I leave the baby for two nights a week. Yeah, but that's what people do on Fridays. Yeah, imagine, Mum, you're getting off your face like that, Annie. You were falling down the stairs and everything, you couldn't stand up straight. She's just wild, she's a wild child, basically. She just lives the way she wants to live. Hannah lives entirely on benefits, but won't take advice from anyone. My mum tries to tell me what to do, but I just don't listen to her. She wants her own way all the time. If you don't give it her own way, she flies off in the party. I'm not sure we're I'm at me with end with her. No, she's pissed me off. She can't live like that. She's got a baby. I just hope this experience will learn or something. 17-year-old James is obsessed with his image. Right, that's my hair done. That's where I look right. My image is very important because it makes me who I am. It's it makes me distinctive, it makes me stand out, and it makes me just me. James can't stand being at home. He spends his life hanging out with friends. And how much that one? What percentage is it? Two bar four air. Seven point five. Seven point five. Nah. I come here so often to escape from my mum because me and my mum have a difficult relationship. Like we don't really get along with each other. I think James is wasting his time at the moment, just concentrating on friends and going out drinking and he smokes weed and that. I've been smoking since I was about 12 years old. It's quite a big part of my life, really. I smoke weed every single day. It's always a good thing to have when you feel like really. It's well hard. James's parents divorced when he was seven. He hardly ever sees his father. It's been all right not having my dad around. But I would like him in my life, but it's just difficult because he lives so far away. The only way James gets in contact with his dad is if he wants money off him or something, but otherwise, not really, no. Tired of their constant rows, James's mum is on the verge of kicking him out for good. He can come back in a bad mood and just kick off at the slightest little thing I say. It's the past maybe year or so, things have been... Really hard. So I'm hoping after this trip we can make a fresh start. James needs to realise that he has got potential, but I need him to ch make these changes. Sorry. To try and get their family lives back on track, both parents have agreed to send their wayward teens to the other side of the world to live with new parents under strict rules. I'm gonna miss him loads, but I'm proud of him for doing this. Just a bit sad, just so she learns something while she's out there. Yes. Hey, yeah. It's scared. And your head heads fast and so near. But they're always different people. The teen's four and a half thousand mile journey will end here. The town of Tuella in the state of Utah, deep in the American Midwest. Here they will be staying with the a clean living Mormon family who dedicate their lives to God. We follow his teachings, his principles out of the Bible and that's how we run our home. Dad Spencer is a plumber, whilst mum Nicolene homeschools their four children. 12 year old Quinton, 11 year old Paige, 7 year old London and Porter who's five. Discipline is really important in our home. 
In order for a person to be a success in life, they have to learn how to master themselves. For children's lives, it is very good to have morals and standards and rules in the home. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early... We consider ourselves very patriotic in our family. We instill that in our children, to love your country, to love your God, to be a person who's going to be able to change your country for good. Mr. and Mrs. strictly control their children's access to youth culture. We're not allowed to watch or listen to anything that the prophet himself would not listen to. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Drinking drugs and sex, they're selfish behaviors that destroy lives. The have just one goal for their children. They've got to make a difference in this world, a difference for good. That's why we parent the way that we parent, because we are warriors for good. After 20 hours of traveling, James and Hannah touched down in the state capital, Salt Lake City. I've been smoking since I was like nine years old, so I'm obviously addicted. Without a fags, I get really stressed out. Utah is one of America's most conservative states. You must be 18 to smoke and 21 to drink alcohol. Uh, <laughs> the man's the <laughs> If you live in a hidden neighborhood like this, it's like posterior lane. Are you ready for this? If I'm not by now, it's too late. <gasps> there they are! Oh my god! Hello! Hello! Welcome to Utah. I give you the hug. Hi, I'm Nicole. Oh, yeah. I'm Nicole. Uh, I can yeah. give you a hug. Definitely, definitely. Hi. Nice, Hi. nice to have you here. Pleasure. I'm James. James, nice to meet you. I'm Nicole. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Did I'm you Spencer. travel good? Yeah. I'm James. Yeah. yeah. I'm James. All right. I, I, not I noticed there's there's kind of like already a few things that we don't usually do in our house. Yeah. So we don't smoke. Can I just take them from you? <laughs> I really, I'm, I don't mean to disrespect you, but I really need a cigarette. The thing is, is that then you'll have a smell on you after. I've got a deodorant in my bag. I hung off no stickies for 10 days. But I'll just hold on to these ones right now and your lighter and stuff. Oh, I can't, okay. I'm not going to give my lighter away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, for now, hold on to the lighter, but I'll, I'll, take, the, I'll take the cig. Okay. Can, can I just have one blow? <laughs> really, no. But are no. you going to give these back to us now? Do you know what? We're going to go over all the stuff inside, okay? So, thank you. And um, I'm guessing you just got some just soda or yeah. something. Okay, we, we generally actually don't drink Coke, but if you want to finish that off today. Okay, come on. Then you... Oh, yeah. You don't have to drink it right now. Go for it. Like it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can yeah. go for it. <laughs> Can I can I actually smell what you're drinking to make sure it's not like <laughs> not like alcohol or something? Oh whoa! I can smell it from here. Okay, you know what? Actually, it, sound, it smells like it's alcohol. So sorry that I made you do that because actually you're gonna have a harder day now because of that. So I'm gonna dump this in the gutter, okay? Right, and and we'll feed the street, okay? Yeah. That's just a waste now. We should have drunk it in the car. Are you ready to go in? Yeah. Oh. I would need a cigarette, man. I need a cigarette as well. For the next 10 days, Hannah and James will be living as children of the family, from doing daily chores to being homeschooled. Hi, you all right? Hi. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is James and Hannah. Hi. You want to say right. hello? Nice to meet you. What's your name? I'm, I'm Quinn. Nice to meet you, Quinn. Nice, nice to meet you, Quinn. Nice to meet you, Paige. Hi, Paige. Hi. What's your name? London. Oh, hi, London. Like the city, but it's spelled a little different. Porter. Um, hi to meet you. I mean, nice to meet you. <laughs> the live in a modest four-bedroom house. They surround themselves with photos as a reminder of the importance of family. That is a picture of Spencer's brothers and sisters and their kids. I haven't even got a picture of my baby to show you as I forgot it. Your babies? You have a baby? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So you left him with your mom or something? It's yeah, a girl she's with my mom, a girl. Her name's Snisha. She's and gorgeous. how old is she? She's nine months old. Nine months? Yeah. Oh, what a she's fun She's amazing. Day. I think it's a little bit shocking that she has a baby. I think it's sad. I hope she's a good mother. This is actually the bedroom, Hannah, where you will be staying. Hannah will be sharing a room with 11-year-old Paige. Oh, my God. <gasps> <laughs> oh, my God, it looks more like a grandma clothes. James will be staying in 13-year-old Quinton's room. Um, people I've just met seem really nice. 
I don't think they seem that strict and I don't think they'll be that harsh. Mormons believe the parents have absolute authority over their children. Before they fully welcome the teens into their home, Spencer and Nicolene want to establish the rules of the house. So I made you each a little packet and they have um, a lot of the rules of our home in them and we're going to go over them with you, okay? Things that we will and will not do. Number one is language. Uh, in our home we do not swear, we do not gossip about other people or be rude to other people. We do not consume alcoholic beverages or addictive substances, energy drinks, hard liquor, coffee, tea, caffeinated drinks, etc. Coffee? You can't yes. drink coffee? We have no, no coffee here. It's, it's addictive. So the other things, and these are rules that we cannot and will not bend on, okay? Smoking. Oh, but that's just that's, got, that's, that's a no-no for... Yeah, uh, that is just one thing that I, I can not go without. Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm bending your views, but... The, okay, uh, now remember well, the that time. these are all no answers. No, no, it's not a no. Because I need my nicotine. I would say, well, you know, no, no, I cannot, no, no. I would not I call can't. that necessarily not calm. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have to work on calm a little yeah. bit, okay? okay. And that's so fine. Calm, calm is what he showed. So. Okay. Let's go into what we're going to wear. Oh. <laughs> it says, we will not wear clothing that shows our shoulders, stomachs, backs, or thighs. Clothes that are too tight or closely fitted are inappropriate. All underwear must be completely covered by outside clothing. Clothing considered to be sloppy, dirty, or contain any emblems or pictures which do not invite the spirit of the Lord are inappropriate. We haven't really come to change how we look, we've come to change our That's attitude. Exactly. I don't see why changing our clothes, our dress yeah. sense, has anything to do with our attitude or how... That is an amazing thing to bring up, Jack. The way that you present yourself to the world shows the world what statement you're making. So if you're making, if you're making a statement... It doesn't matter, matter. It doesn't matter if I wear a dress today, to me ankles, I'm still going to talk yeah, the way uh, I'm going to talk. talk exactly. It's still going to come exactly. out and I'm still going to be me just because yeah. I'm wearing a stupid, ugly dress. Doesn't mean I'm going to change. I'm not changing any of my I'm clothes. My I'm clothes. not going for that Stop wall. talking. No, I'm wearing my clothes. We're going to go through that, and these are no answers, so we're going to talk about these things. I'm waiting in my clothes, and now I need to go for a cigarette, because now I'm stressing. As far as the rules that we have, they may seem extreme, but uh, they are rules that we've implemented for our family, and anybody who would uh, live in our home would be expected to follow these rules. Being given firm boundaries has left James and Hannah in defiant moods. Uh, it doesn't care what she wants me to do. It's not going to happen. She's not letting us do what we want to do by smoking. So I'm not going to try and obey her rules and not wear fake tan or short skirts. It's my body and I show it if I want to. I'm going to wash my hands. One of my main priorities in life is my appearance. Because that's where I've been brought up. I haven't been brought up as to dress and cover myself up with being br brought up to, if you've got it, flaunt it. Boy, I know you want it. <laughs> <laughs> the teens have arrived on Memorial Day, a public holiday all over America. And tonight, they are hosting a celebration barbecue. We want you to meet our family. Okay. I want to meet your family. We can't take you up there if you're out of control. No, okay. we like to have fun, and we want you to do that with us. That's yeah. the fun thing. I'm not going to have fun now if I'm not comfortable with what I'm wearing. And I know I'm not. Well, we want you, by the end of this, to to be able to have fun regardless of what you're wearing. I won't be able to. Well, we that's can, your what choice. What if we could get you some really nice things? Oh, I don't you know. Easy. I mean, what if there's some really nice things, you know? I'm okay with spending a little bit of money on clothes. If it's going to feel, be something that you can feel comfortable wearing and it also fits within our family standard. I don't understand why you can't see your shoulders. I want us to get a tan as well. God gave your shoulders. Surely some days, like, if it's a nice day, we could go somebody oh. on the garden or something. For a with, with your shoulders covered yeah. over? With everything yeah. covered with, over? With on, oh, right? God, this is wrecking my head. This is wrecking my head. I can't cope with this no more. I don't understand why you can't show your shoulders. God gave us shoulders for a reason. And obviously, it's, if, he, if God let people make clothes like this, then obviously it wouldn't really bother if you showed your shoulders off. 
here we are starting at a really strange place with her at age 17, having a long history apparently of, if I have a fit, I get what I want. Ultimately, I'll get what I want. And she may give a little bit to try to please, but then she still wants what she wants. Well, this is gonna be tricky with her. This is gonna be hard. Modest dress is a key principle of the Mormon faith. For Nicolene, compromise is not an option. They are a little tight. They are a little tight. I'm not wearing that. No way, Jose. Hey, it would be cute. No. Are you having a laugh? I am not wearing that. I'm not wearing that. Go. No, yeah. no, 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 If Hannah won't meet the standard, she cannot join tonight's get together. I don't want my family and my kids looking at you. There's nothing wrong with it. You can't see that. Actually, you can. Wear that hat. Nicolene believes that standing firm and enforcing boundaries are the key to good parenting. Yeah, but it's low cut, they won't let me wear it. Yeah, but that's going to be cool for me. She'll never make a threat that she isn't prepared to carry out. But you're still having an attitude problem. Yeah, because look at the state of me. I look like a hippie. She can't go. James leaves with Spencer to get to the family gathering on time. Nicolene is left to face the wrath of Hannah. Yeah. Actually, yeah, it's a coming to change, but you can't just expect me to change like that. Right now, just about everything that I say, you're arguing with. You make me feel like you're ashamed to take me as myself to take to see your family like it's some special thing. That's why I'm pissed off with you. Which is which is why it's probably not wise for us to go then. Sam, let's go then. I'm going out in a big game. She has very strong opinions and that she pretty much only cares about her image. And, and I hope if she ever decides to let down her wall just a little bit, that we can show her something bigger to care about, something better. I mean, family, relationships, those things are all way more important than somebody's image. And I hope she gets that. She's made me cover all my body up. She just irritates me to pieces just because she's a fucking fat Bible basher. Doesn't mean I want to be one. <laughs> Memorial Day is a nationwide family holiday. James, come and meet everybody. <laughs> this is Nicolene's father. His name is Nick. Your name is? James. James, yeah. happy to meet you. Andrew Welcome. Well. Thank you. And this is her mother right there. Nice to meet you. At home, James spends hardly any time with his close relations. Me and my family never do anything like this. We used to, like with my dad and his ex-wife. But like now, we don't do much anymore. Just, we all do our own thing. It's the end of James's first day living with the p**ks and their strict rules. You've been a bit strict like with what she's wearing and that because people just wear what they wear and feel what they feel comfortable in, I think. Well, I don't know if you had any different ideas of how we might be able to get her past that. We hope we can. We're, we're kind of sad she's missing all this. Well, the family, I think they're quite nice, really. The woman does mend them a little bit, but the rest of them, the dad's all right. At the end of the day, I've got to stay with them until next week. I might as well make the most of it while I'm here and save any arguments and just get along with one. Today, the teens will be homeschooled by Nicolene. Hannah, mm -hmm. wake up. James. It's like 7.25 right now. But first, the entire family are expected to pull their weight with household chores. All these lists are the chore lists. Chores are very important in our house because, number one, it keeps the house clean. And number two, it teaches us how we need to do things when we grow older. I think the kids should do gardening. It's a boring job on kitchen and do boring things. Well, I think it's fair for young kids at that age to have to do chores. They should be out having fun with a friend. It's annoying, it's disappointing. It's not like it's not going to get milky again by the end of the freaking day. 
Let me show you where it goes. So in case you need it again, which you might. Nicolene believes that home educating her children helps to protect them from the temptations of the playground. The reason that I homeschool is because I want them to do good in the world and to know what good means. I don't want them confused by somebody else's priorities in life. Hannah and James are required to join the daily study sessions. James has other ideas. Today I've decided to get some time, a real one. Can you get that man? In the garden. Boys. Hey, James, come here, please. Oh, no, man. Today is Quentin's 13th birthday. And since it's his 13th birthday, I thought that we would do something that revolved a little bit around the age 13, OK? Mm. Hannah was expelled from school age 13 when she was just two years older than Paige. When I was 13, I was just drinking like every night of the week and just going with loads of boys and because I was drunk, I was kissing them and that. Mm -hmm. Are you going to save yourself to manage? Mm -hmm. You're not going to kiss no one? How are you supposed to find out what's the for you then if you don't kiss them? I'm fine. You don't, you don't need to. You don't to need to. Them. You just explore them. No, you don't. Mm -mm. You find out what their morals are and how they live their lifestyle. They've taught their children to stand up for what they believe in. That's bad. It's bad because you're showing special parts of your body that God doesn't want you to. James has been struggling with his education for some time. I didn't really do that good at school because I didn't concentrate enough in year 11. Year 11 is the year I lacked in <laughs> and started smoking more weed. <laughs> it made my grades go fail because I used to get my exams buzzing. He passed enough GCSEs to get into college but has little chance of graduating. I don't know how often he attends college, to be honest, but it's not regular. Things are not looking good and he's looking to be kicked out if he doesn't pull his socks up. Nicolene believes a good education is essential for every teen to fulfil their potential. I don't want to learn about maths and English. I don't want to learn science. I understand that. You're acting like you know what my plan is for the day, which I think you don't. Homeschooling is about learning whatever you want. Did you know that? So here we go, and I'll just do it with you both together. Are you planning on going too, Hannah? Yeah. The thing is, we're not little kids. Yeah. No, we're I know you're not little kids. We're 17 years old, and you're treating us like we're 10-year-olds. The thing about... Yeah. Like you, like how am I might to like a three-year-old? At the end of the day, I'm 17 years old. I can look after myself. OK, talk calmly. No, because I'm, yeah. I'm sick of being treated like a little kid when I'm not a little kid. <laughs> but I look like 10 years old. No! <laughs> Idiot. OK. But there's still, there's still no trust factor there. Do not chase them. No, I, I wouldn't. Them. I wouldn't want to. They, they want an audience. That's what they're doing. Okay. Yeah. They don't. If they don't get an audience, hopefully this behavior will stop happening. In England, James and Hannah constantly run away from their problems, but in suburban Utah, they have nowhere to go. We want to go to a pub, but we know we ain't got no dollars. And we've got no, no ID. We've got no ID. It's so stupid, though, because you can't drink in their home. <laughs> and they won't let you drink because you're only 17 <laughs> and we're not 21. In the family, any argument is discussed openly and used as an opportunity to learn. Or how, how do you feel about Hannah and James running away? Bad. I think they're acting like babies. They're, they're being very immature. Okay. How do you think they should handle the situation? They should disagree appropriately with you two, and they should take it more calmly. Yes. Can we come back in? Are you asking to come in? Yeah. I think so. Come on in. Hey. I think they've about gone nuts. They're trying to push all my mom's buttons, and they haven't realized yet that it's not going to work. I, I tried this for years. I tried pushing my mom's buttons, and it, it never worked. Could you go inside, please? Nicolene has had enough of James and Hannah's behavior. My kids right now, um, I think, are really disappointed in you guys. Why, because of how we dress? No, because of the way that you're treating them and their 
parents and their family. They've seen you be very disrespectful and yell at us. We've said for the past two days we're not changing now, we're looking at sticking, we're sticking with him. The thing is, I mean, you could stay out of instructional control for the entire week, but it would be such a bore for everyone I'm already to bored watch. now, there's nothing to bloody do. I know, just this I know, country. because that's because everything that we were going to do, we can't do, that's why. Because you're out of instructional control. At this point, we can't go back to close, okay? Yeah. At this point, yeah, we can't. We're just stuck in a big vote over <laughs> our appearance, that's what it is. Exactly. And I want you to look attractive and I nice. I want to look attractive for me in America. But still keeping the family standard. We'll take us shopping. Let's see what you can get us. So I'm right in assuming then, Hannah, that you would be willing to change your wardrobe for the week that it covered yourself as long as you liked the look of yeah. the clothes. Awesome. Then I think we're at the place we need to be. That really shows that you've chosen to respect me and that is a great place to be because then we can start doing things that are not about clothes. Yeah. And that would be really great. The eat breakfast together every morning. It's an opportunity to discuss any problems or concerns as a family. Look at this big stack of pancakes that Sarah's made. I think we need to eat them. Spencer believes that only married couples should have children. He wants to know more about how Hannah is raising her daughter. Were you planning on having a baby? No. This young? No. When I was 14, I was actually trying for the baby. And then... It At just... 14? Yeah. How come? I just wanted one. I just wanted the kids. And you have a, a, a job? Or yeah. How do you how do you support your little oh, girl? I'm on benefits. So the the government helps to pay for diapers and, and food yeah. and things like that for the for the baby. I get 128 pounds a week, and that's like for me and the baby. And like it is hard to, to cope on that way. And how far will that go? What will that buy? Right again. Me and the baby some new clothes. Um, the baby's milk. The baby's nappies. The rest of it goes like on me, like on, like on the flies, like I'll go and spend it on alcohol or cannabis sauce or like that. So if you didn't spend it on those things, would you have more money to spend on your little girl? Mm -hmm. To buy her she more? She has everything she needs, so. Well, what if you were to save that other money that you're spending on drugs and stuff? How, how could that help you? It could, it could help me, like, but I can't save money. Like I'd say, I'd probably go and save like £300 and think, oh, I don't care, I'm going to go and um, spend it now. <laughs> I can't save money for a long time. It just kind of uh, shocked me that this is, if this is what the teenagers who are having babies spending their money on, um, certainly that I'm ready to be mothers. Uh, and, and I think we've seen in Hannah a lot of behaviours that uh, would portray that she's not ready to be a mother. She's a mom, but she's not a mother. <laughs> believe passionately that a strong work ethic is central to good character. Dad Spencer wants Hannah and James to discover the satisfaction that working can bring. He's volunteered them for a day of hard graft at a friend's ranch, where they'll have to get their hands dirty alongside owner Carol and local teens Erin and Cash. Aaron, you're going to work with James and help. You guys will help. Just throw a bail. Hannah, you'll work with me and we'll throw them up. And they need to be. Loaded on them second. Cash works at the ranch in exchange for using their stables. He mows 70 lawns a week to earn spending money. <laughs> Good job. Well, I'm 15, and I've been working with my brothers and with my dad since I was 10, doing this and that. And you know, I'm not saying every kid needs to start when they're really young, but I think every kid needs to learn. Every teenager, especially in your teenager, needs to learn you have to work to have fun. <laughs> Oh my God. Even before she got pregnant, Hannah was happy to live on state benefits. Oh my God, Mom. Last time I went to work, I was 15, so that was two and a half years ago nearly. If it gets too much for me, then I'm going to let them know that I'm not prepared to do no more. With 150 acres and 120 horses to take care of, the ranch doesn't run itself. That was only 10 bales. Normally you get a truckload of 150, 250 bales. You gotta take you gotta put them all on and you gotta take them all off when you get here. It takes a while. So what have you done before? I've done name experience in a salon, like doing hair and nails and that. But then I ran away. 
Well, this is totally different than doing Very nails and hair. I yeah, <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> They're like volunteering, helping that woman, and they're not even their kids. During a rare break, James is keen to show off about his usual recreational activities. On an average weekend, I'd go out and get drunk and like do drugs and that kind of stuff, and like go to parties or go out in town, and just generally have a good time. Why do that? You can have all the fun you want without getting drunk. Do you go out or drink or smoke or do drugs or anything? Never. So what do you do? Like go parties? Um, yeah, yeah, some. Go to parties, like hang out with friends, watch, watch movies. movies. So you would never drink? Never? No. No. Oh, my God. I think it's good that they they don't they can have fun without having to drink or anything. I think because of their religion, I think it's a bit sad because they're still young and they shouldn't have to follow a religion so much and look into it in so much debt at such a young age. They should be going out and having fun and living their life while they're young. Nicoline has arranged for James to attend a local homeschool get-together. She wants him to experience positive peer pressure. So everyone's got a team. <laughs> Today's activities are all about confidence building and teamwork. Nicoline's sister, Janelle, is in charge. Everyone get a hold of your rope and then I'll give you the first clue. Ready? Yeah! Music, music. Okay, here we go, here we go. Talk to your team. Guys, guys, okay. okay. What? Fucking stress me out! I can't be bothered with it. James's feelings of failure at school quickly resurface. I'm not doing it anymore, simple as I can let him down, I'm not doing it. You can laugh at me all you want. I'm not laughing at you. I'm just trying to figure out that that what's really making you frustrated. I can't be asked anyway, I'm walking. I can't be bothered. I can let the team down, I don't care. I just want to talk to you for a minute. No, because okay. you're not going to understand. There's no point in talking. Okay, well, how about this? When things get really hard at home, what do you do? I get stressed out. And then what happens? What do you do? I have a cigarette. Okay. Anything else? No. Do you give up? Yes. Where does it get you? I'm a failure. I'm, I give up on everything, so... You're not, not a failure. You don't know me, so how can you say that or not? I don't know why I feel like I failed them times because I failed school, I failed at college where I've just been to. My mum's never had faith in me about anything. I only always give up. I hate failing at things because it just makes me feel shit about myself. I'm disappointed in myself. I want to apologise for how I spoke to you and how I behaved. I was just really stressed out and I didn't feel very well. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. Would you be willing to continue on with the race? Because your team said, we can't go on because James isn't here. Should we go get him? And so they, like, they care about you. They want you to succeed. They want you to be a part of their success. When you overcome these hard challenges, you feel good about yourself, you know, because you know that you can, whatever you put your mind to, you can do it. Yeah. I'll come yeah? And join in. All right, let's go. Just right back here. This is your team right here. So work with them, talk to them, see what they're doing. They definitely need your help because they've been working on it. I want to give you a hug for coming back. Because it's hard, and I know it's hard to do stuff like this, but it is so courageous and brave to come back and face it and do more stuff. That's awesome. They need you. Go for it. Yeah. So what are you all doing? Somehow we're supposed to try to get everybody on this. It's ridiculous. People stand on the bottom so they stay in place. Janelle believes that success should always be rewarded. Everyone is given a bracelet to remind them of their achievement. What does this rope mean to you? To never give up and to keep on trying no matter how stressful it is, to just keep on going. Good. That's awesome. I'm glad you learned that. Scott won that. That's great. <laughs> the arranged for Hannah to meet with ranch hand Cash for a lunchtime date. They want her to understand a different teenage perspective. 
you go meet the boy in town, usually you take your mate with you on the first time, and then you just get a bevy and like you just make some weed. And then if, if you're like you're single and that, then you go to back to this house and probably have sex. In Utah, the age of consent is 18. And like all Mormons, the Peck children will be expected to save sex for marriage. This is 16 is when you should date. It should be more learning about other people, what you like, what you don't like, you know, in a person. They say passionate kissing is the word. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't lie, lie on top of each other. And you should always date in groups. Are you allowed to, like, touch each other now before you're 16? You're I mean, not. I mean, before you get manis? No, you're not supposed to do any that. You can hold hands, sit by each other. That, that's it? Talk, you know, and then have you're allowed fun. Are to sleep in the same bed? No, definitely not. That's absolutely not allowed. Because, I mean, if you're sleeping in the same bed, you might as well be doing it, too. I mean, in our church and in our culture, a relationship is more about emotional support and more about getting to know people and what you like and what you don't like. And to get to know what you like and what you don't like, you don't need to be sleeping with people. Bye. Okay, have fun. Okay. See you. Bye. The most important thing in a relationship for me is it needs to make me laugh. It needs to be nice to me. It needs to cuddle me and tell me it loves me and that. He needs to be nice looking and he needs to be good in bed. Tonight, James will be joining Spencer and Quinton in their regular father and son activity, singing with the Beehive Statesman Chorus. Quinn was actually the one who got me involved in barbershop singing, and so it's another one of those family things that, that is fun to do. We enjoy doing that. I never, ever, ever thought in my life I could have fun with a bunch of other fogies, yeah. Even though I didn't really sing very much, but just at least I came and joined in and that. Yeah, I did enjoy myself. It was quite fun. This is James. He's Hi, also from England. Hey, hey. Um, you all must know, before James got here, he said, I will not get up in front of people. <laughs> If any of you have any questions you would like to ask James uh, about England or, or about himself, what he does. James, what do you do for fun? Well, I go out and I just like, just get off my head and just do what I want to do, basically. I've done drugs and that in the past as well, and I drink, so I've kind of got like a little bit of an addiction towards it, so it's kind of something that I feel I, I like to do it. So maybe there's something in your life that you could choose, like singing or dancing, that gives you that same high without, without going to that addiction. There's your advice for the day. That's very true, actually. That's good advice, yeah. I was a little shocked, but pleased that he was willing to get up. And I said, James, the only time we grow is when we do things we don't want to do and when we get out of our little comfort zone. And so uh, I think that he grew a lot tonight. First, I said that I wasn't going to do a question and answer section because my confidence wasn't good enough. But then I just decided, why not? At the end of the day, I need to improve on my confidence. Why not get up in front of loads of people and talk about myself and ask, answer questions, what they're asking me. It's just, it made me feel better. I think that's why I'm so buzzing at the minute, because it made me feel much better, much more confident. Nicolene's younger sister, Janelle, has a baby boy the same age as Hannah's daughter. You have a little munchkin this, this big. Yeah. And and he depends on me for everything. Yeah. Tanisha depends on you for everything. And that includes learning everything that they need to know yeah. to like survive in the world when they're adults. I cannot believe it that someone that is a mom is willing to just go out, drink, smoke, take two days off of being a mom just so they can get their own fulfillment. I don't take drugs or drink of hands, eh? So like when my mum has it, I think this is my free time to go and do what I want. So like she doesn't know that I'm actually taking drugs and drinking. 
but you should be going home and sleeping where your child sleeps. Yeah. That is what a mom does. So then, you know what? When Davis wakes up, I'm there. If he wakes up in the middle of the night, I'm there. Yeah. He knows that I love him more than drugs. I love him more yeah, I than love alcohol. More than drugs and alcohol. But actions prove otherwise sometimes. It's also because of, how can I love alcohol and and drugs over something that I've actually created in my body? Well, that's a good question. Hannah's rebellious lifestyle started when her own family life broke down. We were like a close family, like we all got on, and then my mum and my dad split up, and then they decided to get a divorce. So then we lost contact with my dad then. Hannah hasn't seen her dad for over five years. I got the blame for it. I think that's where a lot of Hannah's anger comes from as well. She could have tried to make it work, and now we've been brought up without a dad, and I miss him. So I do blame my mum for that. Despite her behaviour, Hannah's mum has always stood by her. But after a week apart, she wants Hannah to know just how much hurt she's caused. Hi, love, really missing you, and I love you very much. Tanisha is happy and well, so don't worry about her. Hannah, babe, half the time you have my heart broken with your behaviour. Your drinking and smoking really scares me. It's way out of hand. I just want you to realise it's because I care about you so much. You have to take other people's feelings into consideration. I hope you learn to be a better person and respect the people around you. I love you very much and wish you all the best. All my love, Mum. Oh, this is Can't wait to go home now. You see my little girl? <laughs> and she deserves a better mum than I've been to her. Because she's gorgeous. Nicolene and Spencer want Hannah to look forward to a new life with her family. They've asked their children to sing for the British teens. That was a so really true. great yeah. surprise, so, guys. So true. You made me realise how nasty I've been to my family. Yeah, uh, how I act towards my mum. Yeah. And I need to tell her that I love her so much. <laughs> and then I miss her. And I've got to be good for her. That from now on, I'm not going to be nasty to her no more. Because she doesn't deserve it. <laughs> Feeling bad like that for those things and for understanding her sacrifice. That is a deep form of love, because that's you being selfless. I do love it's it to pieces. It's beautiful, it's so beautiful. I miss my mum now so, and the baby so much, because sometimes I, I try and like, pawn the baby off on people when like, I want to go out. And, like, I've realised now that I shouldn't really do that because like, I only get one life with her. And like she's gonna to get to a certain age, and she's gonna like she's not gonna to want to spend like all the time with me that she that she's gonna to want to now. I just want to be a good mom. I want to be the best mom that I possibly can for her. And I want her to. I don't want her to have a life like me. I don't want her to drink alcohol and take drugs and smoke weed. I want her to be a good girl. So I need to actually grow up now and start being a mom because that's what I am. I'm a mom, and I can't change it. It's James and Hannah's last full day with the Pecs. Okay, so you want to know what we're doing today? Yeah. OK. Nicolene wants the teens to join her at her annual charity gala in Salt Lake City. This event is so incredibly important to me. And so 
I will expect that you will be very respectful. It's a grand affair and strictly black tie. Can I get them silky gloves? We'll have to see. Yeah. We'll have to see. James, you are going to go with Spencer and he's going to teach you how to drive. <gasps> really? Really. <laughs> In Utah, teenagers are legally allowed to drive from the age of 15. Having lessons with Dad is a rite of passage for American boys. You ready? Go. Spencer wants to give James a chance to shine. Oh shit, sorry. Just slowly on the brake, don't hit it real hard. I would love my dad like, to see him to drive, but like, I don't think he's really that interested in doing that kind of stuff. Let's try to park. It's been kind of different living with a dad, like, because I'm not used to having my own dad around. So, so it's like, kind of seeing how Spencer's with his kids. I wish my dad was out with us. Pick a spot and park in that spot. And just make sure you're in between the two lines. He's a good dad and he means well. He's got a good heart and he's a proper good family man. I love Spencer, man. He's sick. Having brought nothing suitable with her to wear, Hannah is on the hunt for the perfect ball gown. That's very pretty. That is gorgeous. Yeah. And it has this nice detail like, in the back. I'm it laces like, up. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. It is nice, like. Eh? It's just amazing, look at it. The p***s have decided that James is ready to hear from home. Dear James, it's probably about 3.30 a.m. Couldn't sleep for thinking about the enormity of the journey you're going on. Obviously, you knew that things needed to change. We couldn't carry on it the way it was. I think it's very brave of you to do this. Be strong, son, as I know you are. I'm looking forward to a new start when you quit getting a little weeks more. She's been there for me my whole life. She's been a single mum, and she's just well, so God damn, damn hard is. And all I've done is walk total hope for her. Put it back in her face when she's not deserved it. Hannah is all set for the evening. With only an hour left to the gala, James has let his emotions get the better of him. He was a bit upset, and I thought if I can try and comfort him, then he, he can try and at least get dressed and make it to the party tonight. At some point really soon, you've got to just take a breath, OK? Because I can't, I can't bring somebody in there that's all Stop upset. Stop talking tonight, you're my mum, OK? Yeah. You're not my mum. I've got one mum. But that's tonight? It. Don't talk tonight, you're mum, all right? OK. That's one thing you need to stop doing is talking to me like you're my mum. Because don't. Cause it's upsetting me even more. Because I've got one mum, one mum only. I might have seen you for 10 days, but you're still not my mum. Everyone gets upset, everyone gets mad, and this, every, you know, there's times you want to punch a hole in the wall. But if you can master your emotions and get over the selfishness, then you've conquered a lot. And hopefully James will conquer that tonight. I'm just stressed out, I'm tired. I know you're I need a five. And I'm really upset at the minute, I don't know why. Can you hug me? James, do you know I want you there? Do you know that? I want you sitting beside me so that I can be proud of you. Do you know that? I do. But I need you to respect me. I need you to be the boy that I'm proud of tonight. You've got to be on my team or I can't take you. You've got to promise to me right now that you'll do that. Otherwise, I don't even want to get you there, because it'll be just more disappointment if I say you can't come in because you're still all uptight. Can you do that for me? Yeah. You look great. Thank you. OK? Hello, Daniel. Hi. Tonight's charity ball is held at Utah's 90-year-old Capitol Building and is attended by the cream of Salt Lake City society. For the 
first time in her life, Hannah's discovered she can combine glamour and modesty. I'm all covered up tonight and I feel like the best that I've ever felt. Usually like, I wear like, little skirts and all that, and like, I feel good then, but like, you can't even see me toes in this dress and I feel even better than what I do with a little skirt on. It's more than a week since the teens have had any alcohol. Tonight's no exception. I don't need alcohol for everything, but I just choose to do it. I don't first, have to do at it. At first, when, we, when she said to drink apple cider, we were like, oh, yes, cider, come on, let's go and get a drink. And then when we noticed it was, wasn't cider, we were a bit gutted, and then I wasn't really bothered after I that. I weren't either. For James, the evening has given him a chance to reflect on his lack of self-control. I'd like to apologise for my behaviour earlier. I don't know why I reacted like that, but, like, sometimes I have problems handling my anger problems and sometimes I just go on off on without thinking about my actions before I actually do them. And like, because sometimes I just get upset for no reason. Apologizing when you've done something wrong is like so mature. Yeah. Because it takes a big person to admit that sometimes. Thank you for coming with me. No Thank, you for Thank you for bringing us. That's yes. what we should be I was doing. happy to have people come with me. James and Hannah still have good times and bad times, but they have absolutely changed. I think they have vision is the thing. They look at their lives with a different pair of eyes because they have been in a different environment long enough to be able to see the world differently. James and Hannah's time in Utah has come to an end. I'm just going to remember the family forever because like, they've helped me so much with things. Like, it's just, this is just one of them experiences I'm never going to forget. Thanks for the driving lesson and everything. Just don't kill anybody, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Hannah is Hannah 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 you okay? Hmm? You okay? No. <laughs> that I am a stronger person than what I thought I was. I thought I was going to break down and go, I want to go home, I want to go home, but I've stuck it out and I've changed in so many ways and I think I feel like a stronger person now. I just feel better in myself, I feel happier. Pecs are a well good family with each other, like they talk to each other, they spend time together, they do everything together and I just think it's great that they're like that. And like when I go back I know that my relationship with my mum's going to change. I'm going to let her in more into my life and I'm going to talk to her about things more as well. Did you love? This is going to be a fresh start for us. <laughs> oh, baby! Oh, my gosh, she's got muscles! Oh, oh, oh it's a hunch! Oh, oh, I really miss Jeff. I miss you too! Oh, oh my God, I miss you so much! I'm really sorry for being a bad daughter and all the shit I put you through. And Everything that I've done to you, that's been wrong. Thank you. I feel so much more happier than now that I got my baby back. I'm so much more happier. Yeah, yeah. I'm just so pleased to see you. I'm pleased to see you too. Please a hug. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.